<laughs> yes, and Mr. President, if I may, when your supporters last night were chanting, chanting, send her back, why didn't you stop them? Why didn't you ask them to stop saying that? Well, number one, I, I think I did. I started speaking very quickly. It, it really was a loud, I disagree with it, by the way, but it was quite a chant. And uh, I felt a little bit badly about it. But I will say this, uh, I did, and I started speaking very quickly, but it started up rather, rather fast, as you probably know. So, so you'll tell your supporters never to well, say I, that Well, I would say or, that. I, I was not happy with it. Uh, I disagree with it. Uh, but again, I didn't say, I didn't say that. They did. But I disagree but, with But they were echoing what you said in your first tweet, that they should go back. Well, I don't think if you examine it, I don't think you'll find that. But I disagree with it. Anybody else? What? For those who are unfamiliar with the phrase, this is gaslighting. Textbook, unequivocal, even lazy gaslighting. Trump is making some tepid effort at rewriting history here with a slew of untrue claims about the send her back chant at his North Carolina rally that made national headlines. And while Trump was fast to throw his supporters under the bus, claiming that he disagreed with the chant, it emanated from a tweet Trump himself posted on Twitter, demanding that four progressive, non-white congresswomen, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley, go back to their countries. And he's doubled and tripled down on the claim numerous times since. To be clear, three of the four women were born in the United States. The fourth, Ilhan Omar, became an American citizen, ran for Congress, and won. All of them are already in their country. So when Trump claims that he disagrees with the chant, that is the definition of hypocrisy, considering he was literally the one that fed his supporters the words that they repeated. And then to cap off the gaslighting, when a reporter confronted Trump, telling him his supporters were simply echoing what he said in his tweet, Trump claimed this. Well, I don't think if you examine it, I don't think you'll find that. Okay, let's examine. Trump tweeted this tweet. It says, why don't they go back and help fix the totally broken and crime infested places from which they came? And then a few days later, an auditorium full of people who follow him on Twitter started chanting, send them back. I, I feel like we figured it out. Trump goes on to claim twice that he began speaking very quickly as if to cut off or stifle the chant. Only he didn't at all. He basked in it. Not for a second or two seconds or five, for 13 seconds, allowing the chant to be repeated eight times. He only chimed in when the chant finally died down. Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. And she talked about not a shred of urgency. Entire ad breaks on Facebook and YouTube last longer than the time he waited to speak again. He waited 13 seconds while a mob of people repeated his fascist propaganda, mob mentality style demanding that an American woman, a congresswoman, be sent out of the country, like some dystopian modern day Nuremberg rally. Now, in their desperation to toe the party line and defend Trump, Republicans are trying to frame this as some issue of patriotism, that Ilhan Omar was welcomed here as a refugee and that if she wants to just criticize the United States, she can leave. And that tells you everything you need to know because even though she's a US citizen, they still view her as an outsider here and that as an outsider, she doesn't have the right to criticize. Their entire argument suggests that she's not a legitimate member of society, that she should just be grateful and keep her mouth shut. But that is the absolute antithesis of what it means to be an American, which again, she is. Our country is not defined by some obligation to blindly defer to the president or withhold criticism of our government or by the same token to stand for the national anthem. All of these examples are just empty, shallow displays of patriotism meant to suppress dissent. Our country is defined by our right to speak out and criticize our government and demand that we be better. Despite their constant battle cries, Republicans aren't interested in freedom so much as they just want compliance. So you might not agree with a single word that Ilhan Omar says, and that's fine, but it is her right as an American to say it. And the fact that Trump can't accept that, the fact that his gut reaction is to expel this woman from the country, is a testament to just how unfit he is to lead a democracy. His combination of narcissism and racism 
literally prevent him from accepting Ilhan Omar's existence. And that should scare anyone, regardless of political party, that the so-called leader of the free world is so incapable of enduring any opposition that his response is to punish her. So Trump might think he's absolved himself by disavowing a chant that he started with his own tweet and his own words and then allowed to continue over and over and over again, but he hasn't. And despite his best efforts to rewrite history, time won't forget what happened in that auditorium in North Carolina.